Hey, I'm Ralph with Flex Film, and I was going to do a quick video today about this uh, BTU meter. I actually think this is a cool little meter. I know I've been using mine for years, and I think it's a very uh, good meter to use. Um, but this meter can sort of lead you down the wrong path if you don't really know what you're metering or how this meter works. But first of all, let's quickly define what this meter is. This, th this meter is a BTU meter, which BTU stands for British Thermal Unit. And a British Thermal Unit is a, a traditional unit of heat uh, that will heat up one pound of water, one degree. That's all it is, okay? If we take this meter and we, we hold it toward the sun, it's gonna give us a reading on how many BTUs are, are present from the sun or any heat source. And if we put a piece of film in front of this in between our heat source and the meter, this number should go down based on the performance that our film should have. I mean, a dyed film probably wouldn't do as well as some of our IR films or carbon films or, or metallized films, okay? But whatever we're putting here, we're gonna see a decrease in the BTUs. The less BTUs, the more performance we have, the happier customers will be. Now, what's the problem with this meter? Let me kind of demonstrate this. At this moment, I wanna demonstrate this, showing you what, a, what an entire wavelength looks like of energy coming from the sun. And I should have somewhere edited in the video that, that graph, okay? Now I'm gonna try my best to reproduce that graph with my black magic marker. And I know I'm gonna be close, but you know, you'll see the real one and then you'll see what I'm trying to do here. But, but right here, it should look something like this. Okay, this, uh, this vertical line is, is the percentage. And it start, this is 100 and this is zero. And this is also zero and it goes to about, let's say 2,500 for our sake. Okay, what I'm trying to show you is how the whole, uh, uh, trans this is a transmission graph. I need to write that down. Okay, this is all, just keep that in mind, this is all transmission. Okay, if I've got a, a, a window film that blocks out 99.9%, .9%, then it's only transmitting almost zero. So I have to start down here with the film. So all films usually start here. And if you also have to kind of keep in mind that this, you know, there, there's a part of this graph here, this, that, that, this, this UV, that there's another part of it that's like the visible light, and then the rest of it is, is all IR performance. So if we take a, an average film, and I'm just gonna kind of show a simulation of three different technologies to give you an idea. Um, it, it all, they all kind of start like this, and, and then they, they, they come to about right, uh, right here. Let's just say right here is approximately 1,000 nanometers, okay? And then at about here, they usually either, either do something like this, I'll explain in a second, or they'll come over here and they'll do something like this, or they'll come over here and they'll do something like, like this. This is typically what a dyed film will do. This is what a carbon film will do. And this is what a uh, ceramic would do. And basically I'm basing this on films that flex film sells. This is our dyed product, this is our carbon product, and this is our ceramic product. But as films block out more energy, that means they let less transmit. That means that everything's gonna go down to zero here. So basically they all start out the same because they all seem to block out a lot of the UV and they all block out some portion of light and we control that. But once they get here, is where things change because this is the IR spectrum. Dyed films don't block out much IR, so they really come all the way up to this 100% range because they're letting 100% of it through. Carbons do well sort of in the middle here, and that's why they kind of linger around the middle. And then the IR films block out just about everything if they're really good, and so that's why they hover down here at the bottom because they're not letting hardly any through. Okay, but what I want to point out is this meter right here, okay, is, is reading this, okay, or processing this energy in, in, in sort of like a funnel. And I'm gonna show you what I think. The, the, I'm gonna say this meter is probably reading somewhere in here. I, I mean, I'm just using common sense. I'm not an engineer, but I'll, I'll explain myself in a second. This might be, let's just say 1,000 nanometers plus. I'm not sure where this line is, but based on my graph, it's gonna be somewhere in here. It, it, there's three points, okay? Let, let's pretend like this meter right here, I'm gonna draw it right here, boom. It's a little meter, there's a little button right there. It's almost, the way I see it, it's almost like a funnel, a little bitty funnel, okay? And it's taking a snapshot, right there, boom. 
Okay, and it's sending this data back down into this little device right here. And this device is processing it. Okay, it's going to take the energy that, that it reads off of this, this part of the spectrum. It's a, it's a sliver of it. And it's going to funnel it down into, you know, it's going to read energy and trans, translate it into BTUs for us so we can see how, how well the film, the film is performing. Okay, but the problem is this. Well, th let me tell you, not the problem. This is the good news. This is where... This is where this meter makes sense, because if it's reading a number here, th 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 this film sort of flatlines and it kind of stays, you know, really kind of kind of on the same plane. So the number here usually is very accurate when it meet, reads carbon films, most carbon films, not all, but most. OK, and, and, and see, th same with here. Uh, this this information that goes to here sort of it can be accurate when it's reading dyed films, because dyed films are sort of flatlining, too. They don't block out much. So they. They just go straight, right around 100% or less than, you know, 90%. Okay, so that's why these dyed films do well. But the, this, these meters are, are kind of having trouble on a lot of these IR films because IR films block out a lot of the IR. So if it's going to take a, a reading here, but yet it's going to continue to go down all the way to zero. Okay, this it's going to send this data to here. It's going to translate it for us and it's going to typically be high because it can't see what's going on all the way out to 2500 nanometers you see if we had a, a more accurate meter that could read more than a sliver this is why we would see a different number and I'll, I'll kind of draw it real quick let's pretend we had another meter and it looks like this one but it's going to have a bit a different technology okay and, and let's say the funnel was like this Okay, and it read every little line, every little point, and like took an average. You know, it took an average all the way. This number is going to be different than this number because this number is only like a little spot. This number is going to actually go, go way down lower because it's going to see that, that this is actually blocking out more as it goes out further. Instead of around 1,000, 1,300, somewhere in there where this meter is taking a, a snapshot, it's taking, if it, we can make it take a whole snapshot of the, of the entire spectrum, or at least this part of it, we would get a more accurate number right here. That's how this meter can mislead you. On our Panaflex, you ought to see a quick scene right now. You should still hear me talking. You'll see that our meter starts out at some point, and we're gonna put our Panaflex in front of it, and it's gonna lower it to, if I remember correctly, it's about 80. Okay, our Panaflex, if we could calculate it differently with a different meter, would be much lower than 80. Okay, and that's where it's going to mislead you. But our carbon, if you see the scene right now where we're putting our Terraflex in front of the meter, you see where it drops down. I think it's somewhere around 100. I know it fluctuated. Um, that's pretty accurate because it's taking a snapshot and it's not really you know, blocking out anymore or, or losing performance as it goes out further into the, to the wavelength. So that number is actually relatively accurate in terms of BTUs. And again, the same for our dyed film, what you're seeing now. Our dyed film hardly does anything at all because it lets just about everything through it, especially in the IR section. But at least it, it, it's accurate. It, dyed, dyed film flatlines too in the IR department. It doesn't, it doesn't like block out a bunch or let even more through. It just kind of goes flat around 100 because at this, at this area, where it takes that snapshot, it stays pretty level, so it's pretty accurate. So this meter can be your friend. If you're, if you're metering dyed films or, or carbon films, you know, we know uh, with our products it's pretty dadgum accurate. But when, we, when we're metering these ceramic films that have these super low IR performance ranges as they carry out to 2,500 nanometers, these things usually miss the boat, okay? They usually read high. So if you're trying to sell an IR product and your pr product performs better, then this meter shows maybe you don't want to use this product because it may short sell you and you may not actually show the customer the truth. So anyway, that's my little point that I'm trying to make about this meter. It can be your friend. It can be your enemy. Just understand how to use it. Understand the product that you're metering and how it plays out on these graphs, which we provide, and uh, play it safe. Good luck.